Lightroom CC has many small hidden gems that will help us manage, enhance, and share our images. Let's take a few minutes to explore them. We'll get started by selecting the Catalog Settings. In the File Handling area, under Standard Preview Size, there's a new option called Auto. Auto allows Lightroom to determine the optimal preview size to create for the library module based on the monitor size and resolution that it detects. If you're updating a catalog from a previous version of Lightroom, be sure to enable this feature. If you're new to Lightroom, then this option will be on by default. For those of you on particularly large monitors or high resolution monitors, like the new 4 or 5K monitors, generating the standard size preview for those monitors might take a little bit longer because the preview size will need to be larger. When importing files, Lightroom now has the ability to add those images directly to a collection. You can either create a new collection by clicking on the plus icon or select a collection that you've already created. This makes it even easier to synchronize your photographs with Lightroom Mobile because you can add the imported images directly into that synchronized collection. In addition, the performance has been improved when copying files from an external device on the Mac. If we take a look at our collections area, we can see there's our aerial collection that we just added the images to and indeed it is synchronizing with Lightroom Mobile. You might have also noticed that we can now filter our collections. So if I want to type in the word main, Lightroom will automatically show me the collection or the collection set with that name. I'll select that set and now let's add some keywords. I'll do this by selecting the painter icon and then making sure that it's set to keywords. Instead of adding our keywords here, I'm going to hold down the Shift key and Lightroom will automatically show me my recent keywords as well as any keyword sets that I have saved. I'll select Main and then use the eyedropper in order to load the Painter tool with these three keywords. I know what keywords I'm going to add because I can see them right down here in the toolbar. Then to add them, I'll just click and drag over all of the images that need those keywords. As I scroll down and I want to change my keywords, I'll hold down the Shift key again. I'll select Clear, and then I can load this up with different keywords that apply to these images. I'll quickly apply them again by swiping. Then, to put the Painter tool back, I'll tap the Escape key. When making changes to your images with the Quick Develop, holding down the Shift key and selecting any of the options now adds only half of the amount of the adjustment that you click on. The ability to make these changes in the smaller increments should help us to fine-tune our images. And for those of you who are shooting tethered, Lightroom will now warn you if your camera has a low battery or if the card is full. Let's remove this filter on my collections and move to a different collection. I'll tap the D key in order to move to the Develop module. Lightroom CC now takes advantage of the graphic processor to speed up interactive image editing by a significant margin. This means that as you move the sliders in the Develop module, they're going to feel much more responsive than before. Now in order to use the graphics processor or the GPU, your system needs to support OpenGL 3.3 or higher and have the most current video drivers. If you want to see if your system is taking advantage of the GPU, Go to the Preferences, and then click on the Performance area. If your system meets the requirements and Lightroom can take advantage of the GPU, it will be listed right under the Use Graphics Processor option. If not, as in previous versions, Lightroom will continue running the calculations on the CPU. One of the features that's going to save me a huge amount of time when making adjustments is Lightroom's ability to set black and white points without changing any of the other options. If I hold down the Shift key and double click the word whites, and continue to hold the Shift key and double click the word blacks, you can see that Lightroom has automatically extended the dynamic range of this image from black in my histogram all the way across to white. 
Moving to this next image, I want to show you the new brush that you can use with either the graduated filter or the radial filter. I'll begin by using the graduated filter, click in my image, and drag up. Then I want to darken down this lower portion, so I'll move the exposure over a little bit to the left. I'll also add a little bit of saturation and a little bit of warmth. If I tap the O key, we can see the overlay of the graduated filter. I want to remove the graduated filter's effect in the lighter area of the graphic as well as this black area. So I'll select the brush and then scroll down so that I can choose the erase option. I'll turn on auto mask and then start removing the effect of that graduated filter by clicking and dragging here with the brush. I'll go ahead and do this rather quickly. I'll click and drag down in order to remove the effect in this area as well. And then tap the O key to hide the overlay, scroll down a bit more, and toggle on and off the effect with this switch. Another time saver is the ability to move a pin that you've created with the adjustment brush. Here I'll click and drag in order to make an adjustment over the pearl that the dragon is holding. Now I want to decrease the exposure a little bit, maybe add a little bit of contrast, and add a little bit of saturation. Now there are four images that are very similar down here in my film strip. I want to apply the same adjustment to all four images, so I'll hold down the Shift key and select them all. Then I'll click Sync, choose the Local Adjustment Brush, and then click on Synchronize. Now when I move to the next image, we can see that that adjustment has been made, but I need to reposition it on top of the pearl. Of course, I can continue to modify this adjustment if I want to from image to image, but I think you can see how handy it is once you've made the adjustment to one image, you can quickly adapt that adjustment to several images. If you have any photographs of your pets that have eerie glowing eyes because of the flash, they can now be fixed quickly in the Develop module by using the new Pet Eye feature. I can either drag out from the center of the eye in order to correct it, or I can just tap right in the center of the eye. I also have the option to change the pupil side and add a catch light. Let's move over to the web module and check out the new HTML5 compatible galleries. Under the layout style, we can choose from our classic gallery, which we can see over here in the template browser has a number of different templates, or we can select from a grid gallery we can also choose from a square gallery, and we can even use a track gallery. And the best part about all of these different galleries is that we can then customize them using all of the different settings. So be sure to check them out and see how they can best showcase your images online. In addition, Lightroom has touch support on Surface Pro on Windows 8, as well as gesture support throughout the app. You can save metadata in a custom page in the book module, and Lightroom Mobile prevents the system from going to sleep now during sync. Finally, when you're finished editing and you decide to quit Lightroom, you can now decide how often you want to back up the catalog, and the backup catalog will be compressed to save disk space. So there you have it, at least a dozen different ways to improve your workflow in Lightroom CC.